What is up, everybody? In today's video, I will be giving you my first two round mock draft with surprising trades that are for sure to shake things up. So, without further ado, let's dive into the action. With the first pick of the 2024 NFL draft, the Chicago Bears are going to select Caleb Williams. They are not trading back. Justin Fields is gone. They need a franchise quarterback. Caleb Williams will come in and be that guy for that pick, number one. Pick number two, the Washington Commanders. I've been flip-flopping between Drake May and Jaden Daniels. With the trade of Sam Howell going to the Seahawks, I believe this is Drake May. Here's why. I do believe that Sam Howell does not want to be part of an organization where his backup in college is going to come in at that high of a pick and potentially compete for that job, that makes Sam Howell very uncomfortable. He knows what's going to happen. I believe this is a Drake May pick. So pick two commanders, they go Drake May. Pick three, the New England Patriots. They need a quarterback. Mac Jones is no longer there. Bailey Zappi's not it. Jacoby Brissett is there. He's probably one of the best backups in the NFL right now, but he's not the long-term answer. He's more like a bridge type of quarterback situation. So right here, quarterback Jaden Daniels, he will sit behind Jacoby Brissett, learn the game before he is handed the keys to the franchise. Pick four. This is where the Minnesota Vikings will start to throw in their offers to kind of trade up and get their quarterback. Um, they do believe that the Giants are looking for a quarterback. J.J. McCarthy's name is rising up the boards. Do I believe he's a top five quarterback? No. Is he a day one starter? No. But with the Vikings, they have Sam Darnold. They're going to have whoever they draft as a quarterback sit behind Sam Darnold. So that is their plan. But I don't think the Cardinals will bite at any Vikings offer, especially since there is a need at wide receiver for Kyler Murray if they want to build around him. They stay here. They choose Marvin Harrison Jr. Pick five, the Los Angeles Chargers. Jim Harbaugh is running the team. He is starting at a clean slate. There is no Keenan Allen, no Mike Williams, no Austin Eckler. He wants to build his team his way. I do believe this is where the Vikings are going to want to offer some picks to get their guy I don't think they're going to want to stay at 11 and wait for a quarterback. I believe this is where they get aggressive and kind of get into the top five. Jim Harbaugh is intrigued by multiple first-round offers. Get some picks, build his team. The first trade of the NFL draft is the Minnesota Vikings trading with the Los Angeles Chargers. Chargers going Vikings. Let's do five. Boom, right here. Trade. Pick five, the Minnesota Vikings. They trade up to get J.J. McCarthy. Pick six, the New York Giants. Yes, they got beat because they were thinking J.J. McCarthy will fall at six so they can have him sit behind Daniel Jones and have him be the next franchise quarterback of the Giants, but the Vikings have a better offer than what the Giants can give up. So pick six, the New York Giants go with a receiver, Malik Neighbors, which is a fire-ass pick for the Giants. Malik Neighbors, Dylan Hyatt, Wondell Robinson, th that's a fire pick. So whoever is going to come in and play quarterback are, is going to have great weapons in that room. Pick seven, the Tennessee Titans. They have DeAndre Hopkins, Calvin Ridley, Will Levis has weapons, but they've had poor tackle play. They are going with the best tackle here. It's Joe Alt. Pick eight, the Atlanta Falcons. They got Kirk Cousins. They brought in some weapons, Darnell Mooney, Rondell Moore. Now they have London and Pitts that have a good quarterback and Kirk Cousins to feed on the ball. So definitely, it's definitely not Rome Odunze here. But there is a serious need at edge. They go Dallas Turner. Pick nine, the Chicago Bears. 
This is their second first round pick. They can either go receiver, get Roma Dunze, or get Edge, Jared Verse. If you ask me, by them having true veterans in that room, DJ Moore, Keenan Allen, I don't think they're going to want to get a receiver. Yes, they might want to give Caleb Williams more receiver play, but I just feel like them just having DJ Moore, Keenan Allen, I think they're pretty much set in the wide receiver room. So I believe they go edge. They give Montez Sweat a weapon on the other side. They go Jared Verse. Pick 10, the New York Jets. If you ask me, they go receiver. Here's why. The Jets run a three wide receiver set. They have Garrett Wilson. Yes, they brought in Mike Williams, but that's on a one-year deal. There is no guarantee that he will last the season. 85% chance he probably gets hurt during the season. And then now you have Alan Lazard, Xavier Gibson, Jason Brownlee. If Mike Williams were to go down, there is not many good receiving options besides Garrett Wilson and Aaron Rodgers needs to throw the ball. They took care of the line and free agency, but they need to give the Rodgers weapons. So they go Roma Dunze, Garrett Wilson, Roma Dunze, Mike Williams. Mike Williams gets hurt, Roman Garrett Wilson. If not, I believe that is a solid three wide receiver set. And Wilson, Odunze, Mike Williams, he is going to the New York Jets. Pick 11, the Los Angeles Chargers. They traded back. They got a juicy offer from the Vikings, and here they are. Pick 11. There are serious needs in the cornerback room. And also on the line, I believe they attack the line here. I believe they go Talise Fuwaga. They go Talise Fuwaga. You come in, play right tackle opposite of Slater, or come in and play right guard. But if... Jim Harbaugh is serious about protecting Justin Herbert. They need to add bodies to the trenches. They had subpar offensive line play this past season. They bring in Talise Fuaga. Pick 12, the Denver Broncos. This team is rebuilding. They're starting fresh. So they can go quarterback Bo Nix, or they can get him some offers. If you ask me, we're going to go trade here. Let's go Jacksonville Jaguars. They are going to trade up with the Denver Broncos. Jacksonville Jaguars, the pass defense is not right. They see Terry and Arnold lingering. Um, and I believe that the Raiders are also looking at getting a corner, but I believe this is a situation where the Jaguars are going to want to beat the Raiders to the punch. I believe the Jaguars go up and get Terry and Arnold. Pick 13, the Las Vegas Raiders. There is a serious need on the defensive line. Max Crosby definitely needs a partner on the line. They also need a quarterback. I don't think they go Bo Nix here. I think I don't think they go Bo Nix here. Um, they can go corner, they can go tackle, they can go D line. You know what? Let's switch things up a bit. We are gonna go Byron Murphy at thirteen. Byron Murphy, Max Crosby on the defensive line. I think that fits uh, Antonio Pierce's style, having a very aggressive defense. And Antonio Pierce has witnessed firsthand that a great defensive line that could collapse the pocket can help you win championships. The Giants did that when he was on that team. I think he goes Byron Murphy to help Max Crosby on the line. Byron Murphy, pick 13. Pick 14, the New Orleans Saints. That line was atrocious last year. I felt like Derek Carr was getting beat up a bit. So they can go tackle. They can go edge here. They can go receiver, Brian Thomas. Or they can go D-line. I don't think they go D-line. They can go tackle here. I think they go tackle here. 
Pick 14, they go Olu. Pick 15, the Indianapolis Colts. They brought back Michael Pittman. He's coming back. Anthony Richardson should be healthy. They have Jonathan Taylor, the running back. So this is where they can either go wide receiver and get Brian Thompson. I think that would be a solid duo. They can go corner or edge or tight end and get Brock Bowers. If you ask me, I think they go corner here. I think they have a very leaky pass defense. And I believe Kenyon Mitchell will be a great fit with the Indianapolis Colts defense. So Kenyon Mitchell... Indianapolis Colts pick 16 the Seattle Seahawks they can go edge here get Latu they can go D line tackle interior tackle interior line this is very interesting um, they have solid receivers they definitely don't need a receiver here they can go edge but I think they go edge here. I think Latu is going to Seattle. I think that would be a great fit for the Seattle Seahawks. So Latu, Seattle. Pick 17, the Denver Broncos. They traded back. They got some picks in return to kind of help rebuild that franchise. The Broncos don't want to risk going into day two, waiting for a quarterback to fall in their lap. I think this is where they get aggressive. So pick 17, they're definitely – Gonna get Bo Nix. Bo Nix is the new franchise quarterback for the Denver Broncos. Pick 17. Pick 18. The Cincinnati Bengals. T. Higgins is requesting a trade. Now there's Jamar Chase. They need to do a better job protecting Joe Burrow. He's been banged up the past few seasons. So they can go tackle here. They can go wide receiver and get Brian Thomas. They can go D-line. But honestly, I think this is a spot where they go best player available. Um, give Joe Burrow some weapons. So Brock Bowers, Jamar Chase will be a great receiving duo for Joe Burrow. Brock Bowers, the Cincinnati Bengals, the fall stops for Bowers. Pick 19, the Los Angeles Rams. There is a serious need in that serious needs in that pass defense. They also need an edge. Aaron Donald. What a great career he's had. So there's definitely a need at D line, but I don't think they go D line here. I think they might wait maybe round two for a D line. But I think they go Nate Wiggins here. Help out that pass defense. That pass defense was not good at all. So I think that's where. Nate Wiggins will be a great fit for the Rams. So Nate Wiggins, Los Angeles Rams. Pick 20, the Pittsburgh Steelers. This is a spot where they can either go center. They cut their center. I believe his name was Mason Cole. So they definitely need a center. They can also go corner, give um, Joey Porter Jr. a duo, give him a mate on the other side. You can go tackle, but if you ask me, I think this would be a great fit. Brian Thompson Jr. to the Steelers. They have Russell Wilson, Justin Fields competing for that QB one spot. They traded Deontay Johnson to the Carolina Panthers. Now it's George Pickens at that like wide receiver one spot, but they give him Weapons. Brian Thompson Jr. to the Pittsburgh Steelers. I think that'd be a great pick. That'd be a phenomenal pick. George Pickens, Brian Thompson Jr. for Justin Fields and Russell Wilson. Great pick. Pick 21, the Miami Dolphins. Jonah Williams was their center. He got hurt. He's going to test free agency. It's, it's up in the air if he comes back or not. So they can go tackle interior but i believe this is where jackson powers johnson will be a great fit with the miami dolphins so pick 21 jackson powers johnson pick 22 the philadelphia eagles they can go 
edge, but I don't think edge is here. They can go receiver. No, I think the best prospect for the Philadelphia Eagles, and every time I keep doing mock drafts, he seems to fall here. It's Cooper DeGene. The Philadelphia Eagles had a suspect pass defense, and Cooper DeGene could come in and start at safety, come in, start at cornerback, or just be the jack of all trades in the pass defense in the secondary. I think this is one of the best like picks for the Eagles. So Cooper DeGene. Pick 23. The Los Angeles Chargers. Now, they need receivers. They also need to take care of the D-line. I think D-line is definitely a top need for this D, for this team. Also corner. They can go corner here. But if you ask me, I think the Chargers can trade back. Or they could stay put. But they stay put. That pass defense, not good. I think Asante Samuel Jr. needs another needs a mate on the other side of the field. So pick 23, Los Angeles Chargers. They go Kool-Aid, McKinstry. I think the Chargers take care of two serious needs, the offensive line and the secondary. I think by them getting Talese Fuwaga and Kool-Aid, that gives them a good A plus round one grade. That is, I think that'd be a solid, solid draft picks for Los Angeles Chargers. Pick 24, the Dallas Cowboys. They definitely need a tackle. They definitely need inter they like they need help on the line in general. They also need weapons. Um, they need someone in opposite of CD Lamb. I think that the Cowboys could be an explosive offense if they can have someone with CD Lamb's ability but with them having their left tackle going to the new york jets i think this is where they get someone that is one of the top tackles if not probably one of the best tackles in this draft um but troy fatunu he could play left tackle left guard he actually play he could probably play right tackle and right guard but if troy fatunu is there at pick 24. I think that is a phenomenal pick for the Dallas Cowboys that takes care of a serious need. So Troy Fatunu, Dallas Cowboys. Pick 25, the Green Bay Packers. I don't think they go corner corner here. Um, and there's a lot of competition on the boundaries for the Green Bay Packers. You have Jair Alexander, Eric Stotes, Carrington Valentine. They re-sign. Corey Ballantyne, and now they have Kijan Nixon in the slot. Like, there's too much room in the cornerback room. I don't think they're going corner in the first round. Definitely not safety. They got, they signed McKinney. I think linebacker is a bit of a reach. So they can either go tackle or interior line. I think this is a spot where the Packers do something that they haven't done in such a long time. This is a serious need. And if you have a chance, you can go look at the Green Bay Packers depth chart of the offensive line right now. If they, if Jordan Love, Jordan Love is obviously the franchise quarterback. This is not a good offensive line depth chart to protect him. They need to take care of this line. It's like number one priority. They go Grant Barton here. I think he is a great fit for the Green Bay Packers. He could play center. He could play guard. Josh Myers is not the long-term answer at center. Sean Ryan beat out or maybe had an in-season competition with John Runyon Jr. He has yet to prove that he's won the right guard position, but – Picking Grant Barton, I think that is such a wise choice for the Green Bay Packers. They take care of the line. They add depth, protect Jordan Love. I think this might be like a great pick at 25 for the Green Bay Packers. Pick 26, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They re-sign Mike Williams. Mike Evans, sorry. They re-sign Mike Evans, so that is great. Um, but if you ask me, I think... We can see a trade here. 
I can see the San Francisco 49ers make a trade here. I believe that they need to add more explosiveness on the line, especially with Armic, uh, Amig Armstead going to the Jaguars. Chase Young is not there anymore, so they need to give um, Bosa a mate on the opposite side. So we're going to trade here. And especially since the 49ers know that the Cardinals need edge help, I think the 49ers beat the Cardinals to chop Robinson. So we are going San Fran, Tampa Bay. Boom, boom. Pick 26, San Francisco 49ers. They'll get chopped. And I know a lot of people are saying Chop Robinson is a second round pick. I understand that, but he has insane athleticism. His relative athletic score was like over nine and a half. His, he's a combine freak. I mean, he had explosive numbers and he's crawled himself into the back end of the first round. He's a first round. He's going to, he's going to stick into the first round. Pick 27, the Arizona Cardinals. They got a wide receiver. First round, Marvin Harrison Jr. They can go corner. D line, edge. Let's see who else is here. Let's protect Kyler Murray. Let's give JC Latham. I think he's fell a bit in the first round, but he's too he's a very good tackle in the draft. I think they need to kind of Build around Kyler Murray, give him the receiver, add some linemen to protect him. So I think J.C. Latham will be a good pick at 27. Pick 28, the Buffalo Bills. They had a mini blow it up episode. I mean, Tredavious White, Jordan Poyer, Gabe Davis. Like they released a lot of players to just make some cap space and just kind of just turn the franchise around a bit. So there's a lot of help in the secondary specifically. Um, so they can go Ennis Rickshaw Jr. here. They can go line, receiver, or safety. Um, but I believe they can go receiver here. Uh, the reason being is that Stephon Diggs is there um, with Gabe Davis going to the Jaguars. Josh Allen needs help. And honestly, it's up in the air if Stephon Diggs gets traded or not. So Let's go add an A Mitchell. Let's give Josh Allen weapons. Pick 29, the Detroit Lions. They definitely need help at the cornerback position. They need to go defensive line here as well. Edge. Um, but I believe this is a situation where they might just have to get a defensive tackle. I think they go D tackle here. Yeah, I think they go D tackle here. Shazan Newton to Detroit Lions. Pick 30, the Baltimore Ravens. Odell Beckham Jr. is gone. So now it's just Zay Flowers. Um, they can go receiver or offensive tackle, but... I just think that this team needs to get younger and more explosive. Yes, they got Derrick Henry, and I believe Derrick Henry and Lamar Jackson will be like a great rushing duo. But besides Zay Flowers and you know Mark Andrews, I think they need to add more explosive receivers to the to the room. So I think they go Xavier Worthy, the run the fastest combine. I think Xavier Worthy and Zay Flowers will be a tremendous receiving duo for Lamar Jackson as they confuse defenses with him and Derrick Henry rushing. So I think that would be a great pick for the Baltimore Ravens. Pick 31, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They traded back. Here they are with the second to last pick with the first round. Go edge. Go tackle. Hmm, Interesting. 
as a matter of fact, let's go with a tackle. Do they need it? No, but I don't. I don't think this is a good pick here, Darius Robinson. They don't need a receiver. I think Lay McConkey's second round. He's fell in the second round. I don't think there's any corner. Like no, he's second round. Second round. So I think here, the fall stops for Marius Mims. They go tackle Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Pick thirty two. I said this before in my last video, the Chiefs don't really need this pick, but for mock draft purposes, we're going to pick them. They have Rashi Rice. They have Hollywood Brown. So they can go tackle here, protect Mahomes. They can go receiver. But if you ask me, I think they go with a tackle here. Had they not gotten um, Hollywood Brown, McConkey for sure. But there's a need at tackle. So we're going to go Tyler Guyton. The first round is officially over. There were a few trades that occurred in the first round who I believe that can occur. But here we are, round two, the final round. There are going to be some surprising trades here. So let's dive into the action. Pick 33, the Carolina Panthers. Now they get their first pick. They need help in the receiver room. They got Deontay Johnson. Adam Thielen is there. They can go edge. They can go tight end. I don't think they go tight end here. They can go interior line. Nope. But I think it's between edge and receiver with Brian Burns going to the New York Giants. There is a serious need on the edge. Darius Robinson falls out of the first round, but I think this will be a solid pickup for the Carolina Pat, the Carolina Panthers. Very versatile against the defensive line. This is a great pick for the Carolina Panthers. Pick 34, the New England Patriots. They need serious help in that wide receiver room. And I think this is a pick for McConkey. Jaden Daniels, McConkey. The franchise gets younger. They do a little fresh, little rebuild with Gerard Mayo. I think McConkey will be a fantastic wide receiver pick for the Patriots. He goes pick 34. Pick 35, the Arizona Cardinals. There is a need at cornerback. They need help on the line, edge as well. But if you ask me, I think this is where they take care of the cornerback position. Ennis Rakeshaw Jr., he's probably one of the best press man coverage corners in the draft. He had a great season. So we'll go Ennis Rakeshaw. He falls a bit just due to his injuries. So Eric Rakeshaw Jr., pick 35. Pick 36, the Washington Commanders. Chase Young is not there. Once the Commanders traded Montez Sweat and Chase Young, I feel like the commanders were kind of trying to get the top three pick of the NFL draft. So as you know, there is a need on edge, but I don't think Berlin Trice is worthy of the pick 36. They can go tackle. The commanders had one of the worst offensive lines this past season. They needed to care of the line, especially if Drake may is the franchise quarterback they have the goal line here. Jordan Morgan, I think that'll be a great pick. He could play guard and tackle. That's a great pick for the Commanders. Pick 37, the Chargers, look at them. Talese Fuwaga, Kule McKinstry. They're getting some solid picks here. Jim Harbaugh will be very happy. Now they seriously need to take care of the wide receiver room. No Keenan Allen. No Mike Williams. Josh Palmer is not it. Quentin Johnson's not it. Keon Coleman. The Chargers are on fire with these picks. I think Keon Coleman, I think he's like 6'5", give him a big target for Justin Herbert. Chargers are looking nice right now with, with the draft picks. Pick 38, we have the Tennessee Titans. I would go receiver here had they not gone 
have if not gotten um, Calvin Ridley, but he's there for a few years. They can go corner, but they got Snead. They traded for Snead for the um, from the Kansas City Chiefs. Go edge. Honestly, you know what? Let's give Will Levis more weapons, honestly. They took care of Joe Alt, got him a tackle. Troy Franklin, DeAndre Hopkins, Calvin Ridley. You know what? Let's give Levis wide receiver weapons. Troy Franklin, pick 38. The Carolina Panthers are back at it. Pick 39. They can go. They took care of the edge position. They can go tight end here. But I think their main priority is taking care of the interior line. And I think right here will be a great pick for the Panthers. So they can go. They will go Zach Frazier. I think that's a great pick. Zach Frazier. He would be like the new center for Bryce Young. That's a great pick. Pick 40. The Commanders. They can go edge. Nope. They can go corner. Nope. But I think there will be a trade here. The Commanders are trying to be competitive in the NFC East. I don't think they like who's on the board here. Edge, corner, out. Nope. Nope. Let's see who they can trade with, honestly. Let's see who's on the board. Let's go here. We're going to go trade here. Let's go Commanders. We're going. Let's go Giants. Giants trade up. Yes, they are in division rivals, but business is business, right? So this is a business move. The Giants need help at the cornerback position. Daniel Jones is not it. I don't even think Tommy DeVito is coming back. Drew Locke is not it. They go Michael Penix. The New York Giants, Jalen Hyatt, Malik Neighbors, Darius Slayton, Wando Robinson, and a gunslinger lefty, Michael Penix. Solid. Yes, he's had injury concerns, but honestly, if you watch Michael Penix's past season in college, he could throw the ball. He could throw the ball. I think that'd be a great pick for the New York Giants, especially since they know that the Raiders need a quarterback. Kirk Cousins isn't the long-term answer. He's probably there for a couple years, and they'll probably want to sit a quarterback. I think the Giants make a good move, jumping a few spots to get the quarterback that they want to sit back behind Daniel Jones and be the new franchise quarterback for the New York Giants. Michael Penix, pick 40. Pick 41, the Green Bay Packers. They can go corner, but I think there's more of a need in the slot than there is boundary. So I don't think they go corner here. They can go tackle, but they took care of the line in the first round. I doubt the Packers aren't going to go back-to-back picks on the line. Nope, they can go safety. But they took care of McKinney. Tyler Newbin did not have a good workout. Cameron Kitchens didn't have a good workout. So I don't think there's any safeties here that the Packers like. So, if you ask me, I think the goal linebacker, Edrin Cooper. Isaiah McDuffie is in his final year of his rookie deal. He is the new Mike, or Quay is the new Mike. But I believe that by them going to a 4-3, they need more speed at the linebacker position. And I believe that Edrin Cooper and Quay Walker will be a tremendous and amazing duo in the linebacker position. They need help in the linebacker spot. Edrin Cooper, Green Bay Packers. They taking care of the line first round, taking care of linebacker round two. Packers looking good right now. Pick 42, the Houston Texans. They had the they had pick 23, but they traded with the Vikings, in which the Vikings took their first round pick. So here they are, the Houston Texans. There is a knee at the D-line. They can go wide receiver here, but Honestly, I think they go D-line. Braden Fisk, I mean, this guy has been balling out since the season's ended. He's had an amazing, like, what, senior bowl. He had an amazing NFL combine. Like, he's rose up the draft boards 
crazy. And I think by them taking Brandon Fisk here, plugging up the holes and the gaps, helps out the defense. I think there's a great pick right here. Brandon Fisk, Houston Texans. Pick 43, the Atlanta Falcons. Like I said, had the Giants not jumped a few spots, I believe Michael Penix would have been a great fit with the Atlanta Falcons to sit a year or two behind Kirk Cousins, but it doesn't work out that way in this mock draft, so they probably get a quarterback next year, but they take care of another need here. They don't. I don't think they go receiver here. They don't go corner. I think they go cornerback here, Kamari Lasseter, give A.J. Terrell a mate on the opposite of the field. Lasseter stays in Georgia. They go corner. Pick 44, the Las Vegas Raiders. They took care of the D-line by picking Byron Murphy, which was a great pick by them. They can go tackle. They can go corner, QB, EC. Nope, they got beat by the New York Giants. That's crazy. They can go cornerback here. Nope. They can go tackle. Let's give them Kingsley. I think by watching the Las Vegas Raiders last year, they didn't have a good defensive line. I feel like Aiden McConnell, they get hit a lot. Or like that offensive line was just collapsing a lot. I just think they need to carry the line here. I think Kingsley will be a great pick. He has like a great swing tackle. He play the left and the right tackle. So I think Kingsley will be a, a great pick here. The Nor- the Nor- New Orleans Saints. If you ask me, I think this is where they need to um, apply pressure. Yes, they had a great pass defense, but I think they need to work out that edge position. I think Braylon Trice here will be a great edge spot for the New Orleans Saints. So Braylon Trice, New Orleans Saints, pick 46. The Indianapolis Colts. If you ask me, I think this would be a great fit for Xavier Leggett. I think that would be huge. I mean, Michael Pittman, Xavier Leggett, but I don't think the Colts will want two tall receivers, even though that will be great in jump ball situations. But I don't think they go Xavier Leggett here or Roman Wilson. Um, They can go edge here. But we go trade here. We go trade. We're gonna go with pick. We're gonna go with a trade. The Cincinnati Bengals with the Colts. No, it's too much. All right, bet. All right, like I said, it's too much. We go this. All right, perfect. We go here. Trade with T. Higgins requesting a trade. Yes, Joe Burrow has Jamar Chase. I believe Tyler Boyd's still there. But I think they they need to give Burrow additional weapons. Do they need to? No, but I just feel like Jamar Chase... Brock Bowers, that is a good duo, but just continue to give Joe Burrow more weapons on the wide receiver position, especially Tyler Boyd. I don't think he is a threat in the receiver spot, and T. Higgins probably won't start the season with the Bengals. I think he'll probably get traded elsewhere. So they go younger here, and especially at a low cost, Xavier Leggett. I think that would be a great pick for the Bengals. Xavier Leggett. Jamar Chase, Brock Bowers. I think those are great weapons for Joe Burrow at pick 46. Pick 47, the Washington Commanders. They got a tackle with their first, second round pick in Jordan Morgan. They can go edge. They can go corner. But I think this is where Roman Wilson will be a great spot with the Commanders. I don't think Curtis Samuel is there. So, Scary Terry, Roman Wilson, give Drake May more weapons. I think that's a great spot for the commanders, Roman Wilson. Pick 48, the Jacksonville Jaguars. 
they seriously, I mean, they took care of the wide receiver position. I mean, they have um, Christian Kirk, Gabe Davis. So I think the wide receiver position is set for now. They can go edge or D-line. If you ask me, I think they can go edge here. Um, give someone on the opposite side of Josh Allen. Josh Allen's a great edge, but I believe they should add another partner on the up opposite side. So they go Chris Braswell to the the chop to the Jaguars. Pick forty nine. The Colts traded back, gave it to the Bengals, but here they are in the spot. I don't think they go receiver here. They can go edge. They can go tight end. I think they go tight end here. Jatavian Sanders. Um, I think it is important to give a quarterback, especially a young quarterback, a safety blanket. Yes, they're going to want to sling the ball a lot. Michael Pittman, Josh Downs, Alec Pierce. But you just need to give a, a quarterback a safety blanket. And I believe that Sanders is the second best tight end in the NFL draft. I think that would be a great pick for Anthony Richardson. So Sanders, I think that would be a great pick for the Colts. Pick 50, the Philadelphia Eagles. They took care of Cooper DeGene in the first round. I don't think they go receiver here. I think this is more of um I think they I think they can go edge, but I think this might be a bit too high for Neil in. And go linebacker. Let's see who's on the board for the Eagles so far. So they need help at the linebacker position. They can go interior line, wide receiver. I don't think I don't think they go receiver here. I think they're fine in receiver. No. They can go tackle. They did resign and then Dickerson. They can go edge. Who will be a great fit for the Eagles? Let's see. I mean, they're, they're just suggesting receiver, but I don't think so. I don't think they go receiver here. I think they're fine in the receiver position. Let's go Peyton Wilson. Let's go Peyton Wilson. I he is he had a great combine. He plays with an angry demeanor. Um yes, he's had injury history, but you just can't deny his athleticism. I mean, watch his college tape. His, this guy plays with his head on fire, and I think that um, the Eagles need someone with that kind of mentality on defense. We all know what happened to the Eagles in the second half of the season. It kind of went downhill. Something happened in that locker room. But with them getting Cooper DeGene to take care of the pass defense and then Wilson kind of bringing in that angry demeanor, I think the Eagles will, will – I think it's a great pick for the Eagles. Peyton Wilson, linebacker, pick 50, Eagles. Pick 51, the Pittsburgh Steelers. They got their wide receiver and Brian Thomas. This is where they either go corner or tackle. If you ask me, um, interior line, nope. Deed line, nope. Let's see what would be a great fit. Honestly, Mike Samrasil. He is more of a nickel. He's a slot. So they can go interior. They don't have a center. You know what? Yes, they go interior. Cooper BB. I think they could make Cooper a center or on the guard, but I think he will be a solid interior line for the Pittsburgh Steelers. So I think they go BB here at pick 51. Pick 52, the Los Angeles Rams. They took care of the cornerback position. Definitely help out that pass defense. They can go edge. They definitely need some edge help. They can go D tackle. I think they go to Vondre Sweat here. The reason being is Aaron Donald retiring. There is a serious need in the D tackle position. They need someone to come in to A, plug the gaps, B, take on the center and the guard at the same time as you saw Aaron had multiple linemen giving him a lot of attention. And I think Sweat 
is someone that can have multiple offensive linemen give you attention, big body defensive tackles. So they go sweat. Pick 52. Pick 53, the Philadelphia Eagles, they picked 50. Wilson, but I think this is a spot where a trade can happen. So we are going to go. We are going to go with the with the uh, Miami Dolphins. Miami Dolphins trade up with the Eagles. Here's why. Tyreek Hill is about to be 31 years old. And when you have a chance, look at his contract. But the cap hit for a receiver at that age is high. Yes, Tyreek Hill is one of the best wide receivers in the game. But once you start to creep 30 in NFL years, that's a bit too too expensive. And then Jalen Waddell, um, I believe he has one more year left. But Tyreek Hill, Jalen Waddell, they're like about 5'9", five, 5'10". Five, I believe they need to add a receiver to that room that not only has height, but also just kind of just get younger. Um, and there's you don't know what's going to happen with Tyreek Hill's in his contract, so we're going to play it safe with them. Um, the Dolphins are going to trade up and get the receivers that they want. So let's go Miami Dolphins. Ugh. No, I don't even think that's a good pick because I don't even think they have weapons like that to even trade up that high. Ugh. I don't even think that's gonna work. Unless they go unless they do this. Yeah, that's too much. Ah, whatever. The Dolphins trade up. They go receiver here. I think they need to kind of just add more weapons to the room. Yes, they have Waddle and Hill, but Hill's contract is starting to get a bit insane at his age. And then Waddle, he's had some injuries, but I think they need to kind of just give to us some weapons in case anything were to happen with between those two receivers. So I think they go receiver here. Pick 58, the Cleveland Browns. Here they are. Um they don't need a receiver. They got um, Jerry Judy. They can go D line here. They can go linebacker, running back. Nope. Let's go with Chris Jenkins. I think that'd be great. I mean, with Miles Garrett, Chris Jenkins. I think that is a solid the D line duo. Miles Garrett, when he injured his shoulder, he kind of disappeared a bit. He wasn't he wasn't getting to the quarterback as much in the first half of the season, but he did injure his shoulder, so I feel like that played a big role. But I think with Chris Jenkins helping take the attention away from Miles Garrett, I think this will get Miles Garrett into defensive player of the year conversation. So I think this will be a great pick for the Cleveland Browns. Pick 55, the Philadelphia Eagles. They traded back with the Miami Dolphins. I think here is where they get a tackle, Patrick Paul. The reason being is I think they need to care of the tackle positions, keep Jalen Hurts upright. They got Saquon Barkley. They definitely the, – the line's good, but definitely get him a tackle. So I think Patrick Paul, pick 55. I think that's great for the Eagles. Pick 56, the Dallas Cowboys. They took care of Troy Fatanu, pick 24. They can go interior here. Nope. They can go right receiver. They can go D, D line. They can go corner, safety. Let's give them safety. Tyler Newbin. I mean, yes, Tyler Newbin had a horrible, his relative athletic score is not good, but the Dallas Cowboys. I think they need to add a safety there. I think I think they have to add a safety because that pass defense got shredded against the Green Bay Packers and they need to just kind of get better at the safety position, if you ask me. Um I think Newbin I think the Newbin's been falling a bit too much 
So I think this it stops here. Tyler Newman, 56, Dallas Cowboys. Pick 57, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They took care of Amarius Mims in the first round. Go edge. They can go receiver, interior line, cornerback. It's more of a nickel, more of nickel. Um, do, 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 do. What do we do here? Do they stay? I think the Tampa Bay Buccaneers stay. I think they traded back once. They got they they pick they got their picks. I don't think they go cornerback quarterback here. I don't think they go linebacker. Do they go linebacker? Devin White is with the Philadelphia Eagles. They go younger at linebacker. Junior Colson. Devin White's with the Philadelphia Eagles, but I think they need to take care of that linebacker position and get younger. Junior Colson, I think he's a solid linebacker. He's risen up the boards a bit, but I think 57, Junior Colson, great pick. Pick 58, the Green Bay Packers, and I think they should be super excited with him falling to their lap. They need a nickel. Kishon Nixon, yes, he played slot last year, but he is more of a special teams specialist, all pro returner in back-to-back -back seasons, but I don't think the slot is his full-time position. Just let him save his energy for special teams. I think they go with the purest slot in this draft, Mike Samrasil. I think this is great for the Green Bay Packers. They take care of the line, add, a, add some bodies to the line. They get a linebacker to add some speed with, with Quay Walker. Mike Samrasil, one of the best slots, and the Packers need a slot badly. Mike Samrasil, pick 58. Pick 59, the Houston Texans. Let's see who is on the board here. They can go Jalen Polk. You know what? We're going to do this. We are... No, 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 we're not. Trade here. We're going to go trade. We're going to go Detroit Lions with the Houston Texans. Here's why. The Detroit Lions have Amon, Amon St. Brown, but other than that, they don't have much weapons. Um, Jameson, I know they have Jameson Williams, but... I just think that they need to just add more receiver threat here. Uh, I believe I'm Rossi Brown, Jameson Williams. I think they trade up and get someone like Jalen Polk out of Washington. So I think right here we can see a trade. So we're going with the Detroit Lions trading with the Houston Texans. A couple spots. They go receiver here, Jalen Polk, Amon Ra, Jamison Williams, Jalen Polk. I think that gives Jared Goff a good amount of weapons. I Their offensive line is solid, but I think that gives them a good, good amount of weapons right there. Pick 60, the Buffalo Bills. They have a serious need in the secondary. They took care of the wide receiver room. But, I mean, Tredavious White is gone. Jordan Porter is gone. Micah Hyde is in his early 30s. I think this is where they need to take care of the secondary. And I believe right here, TJ Tampa to the Buffalo Bills. With Tredavious White getting cut, Rasul Douglas, he's getting up there in age. I think they need to get younger at the cornerback position. TJ Tampa is a solid corner in the draft. He goes to the Buffalo Bills. Pick 61, the Houston Texans. I don't think they go receiver here. If they wanted to go receiver, they could have just stayed and get Jalen Polk, but I don't think they go receiver here. They can go edge, but they took care of edge in free agency. Uh, they got Daniel Hunter. So Daniel Hunter, Will Anderson, I think that's a solid duo right there. But 
I think they go cornerback here uh, with Derek Stingley. I think they give him a cornerback mate as well. So the Houston Texans are going to have a solid defense this upcoming season. I mean, Braden Fisk taking care of the D line. They got Daniel Hunter and edge will Anderson at edge. They have Derek Stingley. Now they get someone like Max Melton who has inside out versatility on the cornerback. Texans, they were trying to try get to the Super Bowl. I'm telling you, the Houston Texans are trying to get to the Super Bowl. I think they're building up that defense, and I think that's such a D'Amico Ryan's type of thing. He's a defensive coordinator. I think D'Amico builds up that defense continuously in this draft. Pick 62 with the Baltimore Ravens. They took care of the wide receiver in the first round. They got Xavier Worthy. They can go tackle here, they can go D line, they can go cornerback edge i think they go d line here they go with rook add more bodies to the defensive trenches i think Rook will be a solid pick at pick 62 63 the san francisco 49ers if you ask me they definitely need help on um they either go corner, but I don't think they go corner. They can go wide receiver here. We don't know what's going to happen with Brandon Ayuk. There's rumors about him being traded, but we're not going to go with that assumption. We'll say that Ayuk stays, so they have Ayuk, Debo. That stays. I think they go with an offensive lineman here. They either go Christian Haynes or a tackle to kind of replace Trent Williams when the time comes when he retires. But... We'll go with the interior side of things. We'll go with Christian Haynes. They get a body in the trenches. Last but not least, the Super Bowl champions, the Kansas City Chiefs, pick 64. They took care of the tackle position in Tyler Guyton. I think this is where... <laughs> this is like a rich getting richer type of move. I mean, Malaki Corley, he is one of the top wide receiver prospects and you can even watch Steve Smith's Steve Smith has a YouTube channel where he does wide receiver breakdowns and he has a lot of great things to say about Malaki Corley with Rashi Rice, Hollywood Brown. Hollywood Brown's only there for a year, so if things don't pan out, who who's gonna be there? So I think Rashi Rice, Hollywood Brown, Malaki Corley, I think the Chiefs go receiver here. And I think that'd be a solid Trio for Patrick Mahomes. They're trying to get a three-peat. They go Malaki Corley. Last pick of the second round. So there you have it. This is my NFL mock draft. Two rounds with trades. Try and make it a bit exciting. Make it different for you guys. But thank you so much for watching this video. Please like and subscribe to the channel for more weekly content. Thank you so much and catch you next time.